The educational video you are about to see is intended to give an overview of the surgical option known as the rotation plasty. Through interviews with some of the team, a few patients who have had this surgery, and their families, you will learn more about this unique surgical procedure. We, the team, recognize that these decisions regarding treatment are difficult and have lifelong implications. We want you to be as informed as possible as you consider the choices and hope this video will provide you with a more comprehensive understanding of this option. It was tough, I think. It, it was a, it's a long haul between the surgery and recovery, rehabilitation, physical therapy. It's, it's a tough road, but I, I think looking back, it still was the right thing to do. So a rotationplasty is an unusual operation that was designed by some surgeons in Vienna, adapted from an operation that was done for other purposes. And basically the concept is that if you have a tumor above the knee in a young growing child where you have limited reconstruction options and you are seriously considering an amputation high in the thigh, the uh, rotation plasty preserves the portion below the knee, which is otherwise normal, and is used to make the thigh part longer and then rotated, and that's the reason why it's called rotation plasty, it's rotated 180 degrees so that the ankle then functions like a knee. And so it looks funny because the foot is on the end of the thigh backwards, but the foot and the ankle end up next to the normal knee, and because they're backward, the motion is the same as the knee joint. So um, it, it functions more like a below knee amputation than a very high thigh uh, or above knee amputation. Looks good. When we were considering like what surgery to choose, I think the thing that really weighed down the most was that the rotation plasty would allow me to do sports and be um, athletic, and the um, other one would not. It would be kind of it, you know I wouldn't really be able to do gymnastics, which was the sport that I was. Um, doing at that time and even simple things like running too. So I think that was definitely one of the big factors for me at least. Yeah, I think when Caitlin was seven when she was diagnosed and we just figured we didn't know what kind of girl she was going to want to be. When she grew up, what kinds of things would she want to do? And we felt if we went with the other option, she'd have a more normal looking leg but it would, would deprive her of many opportunities of things that she might want to do and we just didn't feel like um, that was fair to her and so after doing much research between all the different options we really felt like this one was going to allow her to run and jump and do sports if, if whatever she wanted to basically she got older as well as uh, no more surgeries after the initial surgery. She's awake and she gets her balance she might be able to do it. The rotation plastic procedure is ideal for children who are quite young, who have tumors around their lower part of their femur bone or the upper part of their tibia bone. And the reason is, is because they have so much growing left to do is that most of our other ways of limb salvage just can't make up for that much growth. So we're talking children in the ages of six, seven, eight years old. That's a really an ideal situation. It's also good at that age group because their brains can mold and adapt the walking pattern so much more easily than older kids or adults. We also use it in a, a older children, and that's especially the case if a um, tumor is larger or perhaps if the tumor involves any of the blood vessels. As long as the nerve can be saved, we can still do rotation plastic procedure and it still can then give that just that much more function to a limb. Sometimes also rotation plasty is used in a situation where um, 
the child is particularly athletic and wants to keep that athletic lifestyle after they get through all the treatment. Um, most of the ways that we do technically limb salvage surgery doesn't, don't allow the children to run and jump and be as active as they like to be. Whereas with rotation plasty, once that heals, you can treat that limb however you want to. With your prosthesis on, you can do any sport, any athletic activity. So in that situation, it's for athletic endeavors. Jack was an athletic and active eight-year-old. The most important thing for us was to give him a chance to get back to being a kid, running around, playing sports, and doing everything he did before the surgery. I remember one thing that always stuck with this, we asked Dr. Gephardt, of all the different solutions, what will Jack be able to run around, wrestle with his kids when he's older? And he said, only with rotation plasty. The ideal situation is when we're presented with a, a preoperative consult um, to meet with the patient before they're faced with the actual amputation. Um, I think it eases their mind considerably uh, to know what they have to look forward to and it takes the focus off of um, the loss and what they're going to be able to regain once they've um, solved the illness. We, uh, we're really working with the patient and the family. A good family support system is very important um, and to be able to address and answer any questions that they may have about what life's going to be like wearing, wearing a prosthesis and really try to put their mind at rest uh, knowing that it's a process. Uh, we're going to be providing a, a tool to them that they will need to learn to use but can enjoy all that life has to offer um, much in the same manner that they did before. Um, they're going to have to learn new ways to tackle that process um, but pretty much anything that they want to achieve is, is available to them. Uh, Preoperatively, we're looking at the patient uh, as a whole person, you know, what types of things they enjoy um, before losing the limb, um, because we want to encourage them to be able to re-engage in those types of activities. And as a prosthetist, a clean understanding of what is important to that individual allows us to provide them um, with the tool most effective. Yes, just like any operative procedure, the rotation plasty does have risks involved with the actual surgical procedure. Predominantly, these are mild risks and rare risks. Um, the, the risks at the time of the actual surgical operation uh, mostly vary depending on whether or not the vessels have to be detached and then sewn back together again or not. If it's the case where the blood vessels don't have to be cut and sewn, then the risks of any vascular complications are lower. Um, of course, if, that, if it's the case where the vessels have to be cut and sewn back together again, there are greater complications that come with that slightly riskier surgery. The other major risks are common to most other surgical procedures such as infection and particularly wound healing problems. It's a large circumferential wound around the thigh and when the children are back on their chemotherapy afterwards, the, the wound healing rate is slower. And so that's one of a common complication we see is where some edges of the skin may not completely knit back together and it just needs more time to heal before they're ready. Other than that though, the other major risks are, um, I think comparable to many of the other orthopedic operations that we do for kids. I think it definitely is a, is a, a great option to go with. Uh, my other two options at the time, or a total knee replacement, or a, a total above knee amputation, uh, high on the thigh. Um, and I believe that the choice that my parents and I made um, just before the procedure was um, a good way to go, considering now that the, um, the mobility that I have is, is pretty good and, and I can do almost anything and keep up with most able-bodied um, people uh, in, in any range of physical activity, running, swimming, um, skiing, any sort of sports. Um, so I think it was a good, good choice and I would certainly recommend it um, to anybody else who has this uh, procedure done or type of procedure to be done. I guess at age, age six, it's, it's tough to uh, expect what you get from this type of surgery. Um, from what they told me the outcome was, um, I guess over time it did evolve into the expectation that, it, um, that I 
that they said, and uh, I did have the, the uh, physical result um, come about that they said would happen. So as far as mobility and, um, you know, range of motion and, and uh, uh, level of physical activity, I would say that it, it, did, um, it did come through about what they said. Um, it's tough to say about what it would look like because that's something I really wasn't sure about, um, as most people probably having the surgery would, would say. The major disadvantage of a rotation plasty is the appearance, and people don't like um, to have the foot on backwards, which is basically what, what happens. But I think it's, it's more um, physicians that seem to uh, not accept this and, and some parents. But I think it's important to, to realize that we do lots of operations on kids with with sarcomas and we do one of these rotation plasties about once a year and so these are selected patients that every single one of them has met somebody that's had a rotation plasty um, they've met a therapist that shows them what the function is going to be like and and so they know or have a pretty good idea what they're getting themselves in for and it's not the uh, type of procedure that everyone Will accept. Some surgeons refuse to do it. Um, some families refuse to even talk about it. Um, but for the right patient, a after understanding all the other alternatives, it can be, I think, a, a very uh, reasonable alternative for them to consider. But um, we use it in the minor minority of the, of the patients. The oncologists actually like it better than most of the other operations we do because the complications are less and it's less likely to interfere with chemotherapy. Um, they don't have as many wound problems and things that could interfere with the chemotherapy, which is obviously one of the more important aspects of, of the treatment of these children. The stages of rehabilitation actually start before the rotation plasty and all along our goal is to maximize the patient's potential. And we can't do that all on our own. We need the team. And the team is the patient, the family, the physician, the nurse, the psychologist, the social worker, and maybe even local physical therapists or other um, people in the community to help out. The first time that physical therapy sees the patient is often at the time of diagnosis. We begin evaluation of the patient, always thinking of the whole person, not just the part that may have the cancer. We do an evaluation of range of motion, strength. We teach how to move around in the bed, how to transfer maybe to a wheelchair, teach them to walk with a walker or with crutches, and always incorporating both the patient and the family in an educational process so they understand why we're doing each thing. And if there's indicated, we also give them a home exercise program so that they can work toward being in the best shape before the surgery. Sometimes they even work with a local physical therapist during the time between this contact and the actual surgery. After the decision has been made to have a rotation plasty, the physical therapy treatment emphasizes Again, a review of the surgery itself, immediate post-op issues, for example, would the patient have a cast or brace, and then begins to do specific exercises. Usually when we work with a patient and we work with their foot, we talk about pulling up the foot and pushing down the foot. But in this case, we begin right away to talk about bending the foot and straightening the foot because that's what's going to happen with the knee of the prosthesis. It's going to bend and it's going to straighten. And we keep that vocabulary consistent throughout the rehab so that the patient moves the foot correctly in the prosthesis. Post-surgically, we're involved in managing the um, edema in the limb, swelling. We want to uh, reduce that a limb size as much as possible before we begin the process. So there's involvement right after the surgery, uh, both from a physical therapist standpoint and the prosthetist. We work together as a team. 
uh, to achieve the greatest result. In the immediate post-operative period, we begin a patient-specific physical therapy program as outlined by the physician according to what was done in the operation. Then we start teaching them how to walk, and we do that in the parallel bars. And the patient begins to get in the upright position and begins to do those first steps. And after they do that in the security of the parallel bars, we progress to crutches. Again, as we're doing this, there's patient and parent education, and it isn't just the walking, but if the foot is free, we're certainly working on the bend and straighten and bend and straighten of that foot so that we're gaining both motion and strength as soon as possible after the surgery. And the patient usually goes home within a relatively short time after the surgery. In the intermediate post-op period, that is when there's been some healing of the bones, we can advance the program to even more strengthening. This is a point where the patient really needs to work consistently on a home exercise program, especially on the foot to gain both motion in bending and straightening and strength. During this intermediate time, the patient may receive the prosthesis. First thing is to learn to put it on and off. At first it seems difficult, but then just a few days later, the patient wonders why he or she ever thought it was difficult to do. And that's the way with much of the rehabilitation, that the first time we do something, it seems difficult, and then uh, several times later or days later, it's really done easily, as long as the patient keeps practicing appropriately. As we begin to teach the patient how to walk with the prosthesis, it's back to the parallel bars. Not only does the patient have to learn how to operate the prosthetic knee by bending and straightening his foot, but he also has to learn how to feel through his hip and foot joints where his foot is because he really has no feeling in that prosthetic foot. We begin with the first time up to emphasize a correct way of walking so that the goal will be reached eventually of walking with a totally normal gait pattern with the prosthesis on. So we like the parallel bars because they're more secure. We also like them because there are mirrors so that the patient and the therapist can look in the mirrors if they need to to get some feedback. After the patient has learned to walk well in the parallel bars, he advances to using his crutches. The crutches serve two purposes. They serve to help with the balance and help him to learn, but this is a period of time where he's not allowed to put all his weight on his prosthesis because the surgery is not fully healed. So it keeps him in a partial weight-bearing status until the physician says that the surgery is totally healed. When the surgery is fully healed, the patient begins to walk with one crutch, giving a little bit of support, but allowing him to put more weight on his leg and really begin to use his hip muscles and his foot muscles for the best walking that he can do. Again, we're always emphasizing a totally normal gait pattern. Um, once we get the limb stable and ready to begin fitting process, we take a full set of measurements and uh, obtain a cast. Uh, we cast the limb so that we get a good representation of their anatomy. And from that, we generate a check socket. It would be a diagnostic socket that we can evaluate the fit and the function of this. But what's missing here is uh, the actual components that make up the rest of the, of the limb. We will actually walk the patient in this, so they get to try this out before we actually proceed forward. And we really engage them in the process of, of making the limb as well. So they understand all the components that are going into this, and they have input into the final design. Yeah. How's that tightness? Of this part or this part? Either. Um, this feels fine. This feels, it's still, it's still can be looser, but... It could be a little looser? Yeah. Okay. Make more comfortable. But Front to back looser. Yeah. Okay. So if uh, 
uh, the overall f physiological appearance, if, if that's really important to the individual, we can take the utmost time and effort to achieve that, the, the nicest looking prosthesis that they want. Um, a number of individuals prefer to have um, the components exposed. They have high-tech carbon fiber and titanium alloys that we can leave those things exposed. And for some people, that, that is uh, a whole image for them. So it really comes down to the individual and, and what they want to achieve as well. At this point, the patient begins to do some more functional activities, advanced activities, like walking up and down the stairs. They start by using the railing, but advanced to being able to do it without even using the railing. And you can see they walk stairs just as if there was no prosthesis. One of the important things that you wouldn't think about that a patient needs to do is to learn to just sit down on the floor and get up again, because kids spend a lot of time doing things on the floor. So we also work on just practical things like that. Running is something that's very important to all children and so that's something that we work on. First just learning to do it and sometimes uh, two people have to run on either side of them to get them going but when it gets good at running then we do things like saying stop and the coordination of doing quick stops starts without falling to really get the running um, up to the level that it would be even without the prosthesis. And then other sports related or coordination activities uh, particular to the patient. And it might be just a simple uh, learning to, to jump. Ball playing can be used to get many skills. This is for working side to side. And sometimes we have the patient trying to take a step forward to catch the ball or maybe turn around and run back to catch it. All of these are good coordination activities. And you can see at this point, this patient really knows how to work and knows where his prosthetic foot is, even though there's no feeling in it, and has excellent control of the prosthetic knee. The patient keeps coming to physical therapy until the goals have been met. How long that is depends a lot on how hard the patient works on each step along the way because if they do each thing as we ask, as the healing takes place, they're ready in terms of being strong, having the motion to go on to the next step. And once the patient has attained a good walking pattern, good function in daily activities, they can stop. However, if they have a goal of going back to sports or something like that, then we encourage them to even come and get better at fine coordination, the running, the jumping, and some of those things. And when that's done, we don't really need to see them except maybe occasionally when they get a new prosthesis and need some more um, fine tuning of their gait pattern. Yeah, I didn't really have any expectations, uh, but the physical therapy and the recovery was really hard. It was really difficult getting back up and walking as normal people do and the the limb and the function like how to move it um, I got used to that pretty quickly it, it was pretty easy to get used to so that was quick but the physical therapy is really hard what I expected was really nothing actually. I really didn't know what I was going to expect. So um, I think it was kind of something that I just I just took on and um, you know over the years and even over the months I just kind of got adjusted to it and it just became part of my life and it you know it wasn't something that got in the way of um, everything I did. It just um, it was really it was my leg. Caitlin you slow <laughs> Excuses, excuses. It is, there gets water stuck in there. Dr. Gephardt definitely played a major role in it. He did a good job explaining the different surgery options and the functionality Jack would have with each. So we, we felt strongly about rotation plasty. He felt like it would be a good option for Jack. And then what really clinched it was meeting a former patient and seeing how great he was doing today. He told us he could do anything he wanted. He could rock climb bicycle rides, ski down mountains, he could do really anything he wanted and he looked great and it made us feel really good about the choice. The only um, person who had a similar surgery uh, 
had a video done many years previous to when I had my surgery. I believe it was the late 70s a video was filmed and there was really nobody I had to talk to or to discuss the options with uh, about my leg at the time. You know what Jack asked Joe? One of the questions, he was little, he was eight, and so Joe was nice, you would, came to the Jimmy Fund. Yeah. And I'll never forget, you know, after we asked all these questions and he told us all the things he could do, um, they asked Jack, you know, do you have any other questions? And he said, do you have your friends still? He said, I'll never forget, he's like, absolutely, I have the same friends I've always had for 25 years, it's great, you know, every, I still have all my friends, you know, and it's something a child worries about, I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, because it's gonna look different. I thought it was a good question, and Joe was like, absolutely, you know, he understood the question, and he made us feel better. I, I think it's, it's definitely a good option. I'm definitely glad that I chose it over the other options. Um, I mean, it does everything I need it to. It matches with my outfits. I can wear any shoe I want, sneakers, flip-flops, heels, flats. I think the same circumstances we would definitely go the same route. Maybe if um, maybe if it, she's older and this diagnosis happened now, I, I don't know if we would go any other way. I think we'd probably still go it because as a family there's so many things that we enjoy doing together that are physical that all of a sudden to, to determine that well I can't ski anymore, I can't do skating with dad or whatever, we just um, take so much out of the way we live. I would say do it and you really have to work hard at physical therapy. You have to make sure you do your best so you can get back to being mobile. And I would definitely do it again if I had, if I was had its choice. Um, Cause now I can bike ride, swim, run, play baseball, football. I, I can do anything I want to. I think you just have to uh, always uh, support them, uh, give them confidence, and uh, it's something that, you know, it, it takes a little while to get used to. Uh, he gets a new one just about every year, and uh, I think it's the way to go because, uh, because of the other two options I think are limited, and uh, I think we're, we're pretty well satisfied with the way things went.